How are you doing today? Roger says he's great. If we can have, uh, if everybody would stand for this first song, I'd appreciate it. We were just talking up here up front. That is always an awesome thing to come up and interrupt the fellowship that's going on. That means you're here loving on each other, and that's a good sign. So never a bad thing in, that, in my mind on that. As you're singing this song, what I'd like you to do is envision yourself, and obviously we don't know exactly what it's going to be like, but entering heaven, you're crossing Jordan. I want you to picture yourself on one side of the river, peering over on the other side, and Jesus is there with his arms open wide, and the anticipation that we're going to have as we get to cross over from this life to the eternal life. On Jordan's stormy banks I stand and cast a wishful light To Canaan's fair and happy land where high possessions lie We will rest in the fair and happy land by and by Just across on the evergreen shore Sing the song church. Uh, it is so wonderful to see you here, especially if this is your very first time at Southwest. Uh, it's awesome that you've joined us, so please stick around. Let us get to know you, get to know us. And again, it's just wonderful to be together and to praise God. Will you please join me in prayer? Father God, we thank you so much for this morning. Uh, God, a new day to work with, to, to praise you and to glorify you. Uh, God, I pray that this morning as we sing and we pray and we, and we serve and we read and hear, 
Uh, God, it doesn't just stop today, uh, but God puts us through the week, and we do this every single day. Uh, God, that we glorify you and search you and seek you. Uh, God, in all things, your kingdom is seen, not just on Sundays here at church, uh, but in our lives when we leave. Thank you, Father, for the blessing of this building, the blessing of this incredible place to be and these people that God you've given us. And I just thank you so much for the chance to be together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, we're getting fuller every week. That's so good. If you've ever heard uh, Randy Harris, if you ever heard the privilege of hearing Randy Harris speak, he always, always ends his uh, lessons uh, with a, a doxology. And I was reading in Jude one day, and I came across it, and I thought, this is what he quotes all the time. I thought it would be good to read this, and then, uh, and then we'll, we'll pray together. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God our Savior be glory and majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before, before all ages now and forevermore. We have been through uh, some really, really awful times in a lot of ways. Uh, we had to, to meet via uh, streaming. We met outside for a while. Uh, we, we've had two services. We didn't even have any power last week. And, uh, and I, just, I just shake my head. And I think, you know, Satan has worked real hard at us. Uh, on us. He has tried to keep us from getting together. He has tried to keep us from meeting. But our God is good. And I want us to thank God for allowing us to be together today to sing songs as we just sang. On Jordan's stormy banks I stand and cast a wistful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be together. Thank you for each person here, for our guests, for our members, for those who are struggling, for those who are doing well, for those who uh, are just seeking a closer walk with you. I pray that you would bless us, not because we're deserving, but because we, we need it. We have to have it because you are the great almighty God and we thank you for all that you've done for us you've brought us through so many things and you will continue to bring us through things and we are grateful in Jesus name amen is Dave Dale's out here or is he out keeping us safe did we have power last week brother There you go. That's what we were talking about last week. We always have power in this church. <laughs> how do you explain? How do you describe a love that goes from east to west and runs as deep as it is wide? You know all of Not express the love we feel, but we long for you to hear. So listen to our hearts, hear our spirits sing a song of praise that flows from those you have redeemed. We will use the words we know to tell you. of mine, and if I had a thousand years, Lord, I would still run out of time. If you listen
listen to my heart. Every beat will say, thank you for the life, thank you for the truth, and thank you for the way. So listen to our hearts, hear our spirits sing a song of praise that flows. to our hearts, hear our spirits sing, a song of praise that flows from those you have redeemed. We will use the words we know to tell you what an awesome God you are, but words are not enough. So every week when we celebrate the, the Lord's Supper and we come and we talk about how Jesus sacrificed himself for our sins so we could have remission of sins, <clears throat> Satan tempts us. Satan tempts us in little ways. Maybe we are Running a little late for church that morning. Maybe we're aggravated. But if I move the chairs and table just a little bit, the temptation that Satan puts upon us, you don't see that. But each of us are tempted. Not giant ways. Not like this. Because then you notice it. And you think, I'm not going to be, uh, that's not me. Oh, no. But if I move it just a little bit, because Satan doesn't want you to realize what's happening. He wants you to think about something else during the fruit of the vine. Something else when we take the bread. Something else when someone's trying to tell you, hey, contribution is good for your soul. He wants you to have little b distractions, little b things, because you think, that's not me. I'm not being tempted by that. First Corinthians tells us we're all tempted. Everybody. Nobody's above reproach. Nobody can, can stay in that. But God, who loves us, wants to give us a way to fight that. And I'm sure Jim will come fight this and fix this later on. Um, but there's always a way for us to, that God gives us, our Lord, that gives us a way to combat that. Please pray with me. Lord, thank you for loving us and thank you for giving us the capability to, to always lean on you. That you will always give us an out. You will always be with us. And even if we sin, Lord, you will always forgive us. God, thank you so much for your son. Thank you as, as we take the bread that, that symbolizes his broken body and the body that he gave for us. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.
as we get ready to take the fruit of the vine that symbolizes how Jesus' blood washed us whiter than snow, it's always great to realize that our Lord and Savior, our God, wants to have a relationship with us. He wants us to be with him forever. Please pray. God, thank you so much. Thank you for taking away our sins. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for wanting us to be with you. In Jesus' name, amen. For the offering, we have two boxes in the back on the right and left as you're, as you're leaving. Um, if it's on your heart so that we can have better things here, we can have, we can have the, you know, the, the order of worship printed out. We can have lights, air conditioning, new chairs, carpet. It's on our hearts. God gives us this to be on our hearts so that we can give back of the portion that he gives for us. Lord, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for allowing us to be able to understand what it means to, to sacrifice and to love others. Help us, Lord, to be with us and put upon our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand up for the next few songs, if you would, please. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness, shining Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us.
When I was a little child, no higher than your knee, my mother bought a box of crayons just for me. I picked them up, I opened them up, I looked way down inside, and the colors they reminded me of Jesus when he died. Oh, red is the color of the blood that he shed. Browns for the crown that they laid upon his head. Blue is for royalty which in him did dwell. Yellow's for the Christian who's afraid to tell. I know it's hard to stop there and not sing the rest of the song. <laughs> I'm going to force that on you. This will be the song before our scripture reading and then Jim's lesson. Farther along are sometimes known as tempted and tried. Tempted and tried, we're off way to wonder why it should be the The scripture reading this morning is from 1 Corinthians 10, uh, verses 11 through 13. And I'll, I'll be reading from the New International Version, which may be a little different than what you have up there. And do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by the destroying angel. These things have happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the culmination of the age has come. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful then that you don't fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common among mankind. And God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it.
Hunter, what kind of person do you think I am, you know, that, that worries about that? <laughs> I, uh, we have a lot of people who go through a lot of illnesses and a lot of sickness and things like that. And uh, we, we don't mention everybody, but uh, it sure is good to see Larry and Joy Becker here after, after being out for uh, several weeks with pneumonia and, and just other things. So thank you for, for coming out. Thank you for being here. This has been a, an, an interesting week. Uh, we don't have any slides. Uh, we did not get power back into uh, this building. Well... It was kind of weird. We didn't have complete power in this building. And, and I know, I know. Where's Dave? Yeah, we, we, had, we had that power, but uh, we didn't have electricity. How's that? Uh, until Thursday. Uh, and so um, my sermon is written on a piece of paper instead of typed out. So, uh, uh, and, and we didn't uh, get the, the, the PowerPoint, the pro presenter up, so uh, you'll just have to look at me. Uh, so I'm sorry, to, I'll apologize for that. Jesus in Matthew 4, he, he went into the wilderness, the scripture says, for the express purpose of being tempted. Matthew and Luke says he was led by the Spirit. Mark says that he was sent. And he was in the wilderness for 40 days. Now, as you read that, you think, well, you know, in the, he was there for 40 days, and at the, at the end of all of this, Satan came and tempted him. I have a feeling it wasn't at the end of that. I think he was tempted throughout the whole time. And being human as he was, 40 days, he was hungry. And Satan says, you know what, if you're the son of God, why don't you change these stones into bread? And I understand, uh, and I've seen pictures, uh, you probably have two of bread of, uh, of that time. It was, it was kind of a round, kind of, it looked like a lot like a rock. And some people have, have said, well, Satan must have pointed out to some rocks and said, you know, if you're the son of man... If you're God's son, then, then make these into, into bread. Jesus not wanting to use his, his glory to fulfill a human need said man shouldn't live by bread alone. And then Satan comes along and he, he takes him up to the highest point of the temple. And he says, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down. And then he quotes Psalm 91, where it says, He shall give his angels charge over thee. And it's kind of, if you want to know the truth, that scares me a little bit. Because if Satan knows Scripture, he's going to use it on you. He's going to use it on you, and, and he knows it as well, or maybe even better than you do. And Jesus responds, of course, no, that's not the way it's going to be. You shouldn't tempt God like that. Again, I'm not going to use my, 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 my heavenly powers to take care of an earthly thing. So Satan shows him all the riches of the world, and I don't know how he does that, but he shows him all the riches of the world, and he says, you can have all of this if you'll just bow down and worship me. Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Luke says, when the devil finished all his tempting, he left him for a more opportune time. I think Jesus was continued to be tempted. I don't think it was one of these kind of things where 40 days and that was it. He continued to be tempted all throughout his lifetime to, to do things, maybe to use his glory uh, in, to... to to satisfy human needs and those kind of ways. But again, if he's going to do that to Jesus, don't you think he'll do that to you? 
He'll wait until an opportune time, until a weak moment, until you come to a point in your life where you just don't have the willpower. He says, I will attack you when you are the weakest. So we come to this passage today that Roger read from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, starting in verse 11. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the culmination of the ages has come. So if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind, and God is faithful. He will not let you to be tempted beyond what you can bear, but when you're tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. I want us to see several things from this passage. The first thing I want you to see is this. Don't ever think you cannot fall. One of the first things I thought about was the Titanic. The Titanic was a big ship. It was the big ship of the day. And people said, this ship is so unsinkable that even God can't sink it. Well, it now lies at the bottom of the ocean. You have uh, a, 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 a musical that's been made out of it. Uh, you can go to Branson, Missouri and see all kinds of things, including uh, artifacts from it. But it happened. Or what about a cocky football or basketball team that says, we cannot be beaten? I remember years ago uh, in, in, in the Maui Invitational Tournament, there's a little school called Chaminade, which they, they don't even show up on the radar. And Virginia was the, the number one team in the nation. They were unbeatable. Until that day when Chaminade beat them. It always scares me when we sing songs like, How Firm a Foundation. Because the very last line says, I'll never, no never, no never forsake. Now, I, I, love, I love the thought, and yet it scares me to death because when we get to the point where I cannot fall because of who I am, I cannot fall because I am, I am, God's, I am God's guy. I'm God's woman. And I, uh, you know, he is lucky to have me. I shiver in my boots. I guess I've seen too many people whom I thought were untouchable. Too many people that I thought they will never forsake. Those are outstanding Christians, and they will never succumb to Satan's arrows. You remember Satan is called a liar, and he's called a lion. And I believe it was the great evangelist Peter Marshall who one time had preached this sermon and came down out of the pulpit, and somebody said, that was a great sermon, Brother Marshall. And he said, I know Satan has told me that several times as I came down. We've got to be careful. We've got to make sure that we understand that we can fall. And number two is very similar to number one, temptations can overcome you. Oh, they'll never affect me. And again, I, I, I hate to keep using sports analogies, but how many times have you seen the wide receiver catch the ball and he's going down the sideline and it seems like he's got an open door, an open way to the end zone and he's strutting and, and high-stepping and that kind of stuff and somebody comes along and whacks him and the ball comes out and they lose the ball. That's the kind of attitude that's dangerous. Paul, in talking to the Galatians, he told them, he said, you were running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? 
But number three, and I hate to be the bearer of this kind of news, but your temptations are not unique. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. Everybody has. And you may say, you know, people just don't understand the pressures that I've been through. I, I, I have something different. No, you don't. Everybody has been through that. In fact, the Bible says that Jesus was tempted in every way except was without sin. Solomon wrote, there is nothing new under the sun. You may think that your, your pressures, your temptations are unique, but really they're not. Oh yeah, we live in a new society, we live in a different place, and the temptations that come up, they didn't have cell phones. I've told Caleb all the time, I, I, I couldn't be a youth minister these days, because when I was a youth minister, uh, you know, the only there were cell phones a little bit when I was a little older, but it was a great big bag phone. And, and there was no way you could conceal that or say, oh, I'm using, the, and, and it was like this, you know, you had to hold the thing uh, like a regular phone. There is no way I could have said, I'm, I'm looking at my Bible. <laughs> There's nothing new under the sun. It's always been the same kind of temptations. It's always been the same kind of things that have always been out there. But the thing that I, that gives me hope, and it's in this passage, it says, God is faithful. Now why in the world would that be in this passage? Why in the world would this be right in the middle? Because God will not abandon us. He will never leave us. Obviously, we've got to resist the devil. But, but he says, above all, Proverbs chapter 4.23 says, above all else, guard your heart. The Hebrew writer says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And I know what you might be thinking. You might be saying, no, wait a minute. In the Old Testament, if you're saying that God said he would never forsake you or never forsake us, and it's all throughout Scripture, what about when they were taken into captivity? What about when the Assyrians came in? What about when the Babylonians came in? Didn't God forsake them? No, he didn't. He was there the whole time. In fact, the ones who violated the covenant, the commandment, was the Israelites. Yeah, God allowed them to be taken into captivity. God allowed them to suffer for a while. But he brought them back. And it was only after a time and time and time again of rebellion that he allowed them to be in this captivity and he brought him home. And he will never leave you. But number five. God only permits what you can stand. This is really a misunderstood verse. I, I have people, and, and please don't misunderstand me. I'm not trying to, to rack your faith or, or knock you off center. But how many people have you ever known that have said, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm putting up with all kinds of things and, and oh, it's, you know. But, but God said that he would never give us more than we can handle. That's not what that passage says. That passage says he will not ever give you the temptation that you cannot handle. But the life situation that you might come into, you might not be able to handle. In fact, if you look in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul is struggling there. He says, we don't want you to be uninformed. This is uh, verse 8. 
We don't want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves but on God who raises the dead. And so temptations and the trials, the test of life, are two different things. And so I want to say this to you. What's your weak spot? I appreciated what Hunter had to say today in the, in the Lord's Supper talk. What is your weak spot? There are certain things that you are not tempted by. There are certain things that seem like pretty big things, and you say, I don't have a problem with that. But it edges into your life. He says, what I want you to do is to understand that God will always provide a way of escape. I don't know about you, but that's... That's pretty reassuring to me. You don't have to go through the sin that you go through. You don't have to, to, okay, I'm tempted, therefore. And by the way, temptation is not sin. If temptation was a sin, then Jesus sinned, and he didn't sin. He was tempted, but he didn't follow through. But I think of this, the the the. the the whole thing that came to me immediately was Joseph and Potiphar's wife. Joseph and Potiphar's wife. Potiphar's wife tried to seduce Joseph. She did everything she could. She made sure that Potiphar wasn't around, that nobody else was around. And she tried to get Joseph to sleep with her. And he did what we should do. And I want you to write this down if you have to. The best way to avoid temptation is to run. It says he ran. He ran to get out of there. He ran to get away from this. And although she kept his cloak and accused him of things, he didn't sin as a result of that. And I got a little piece of advice, and, and I'm not just saying, hey, you people need to do this. This is good advice for me. It's important to decide before you're faced with the temptation what you're going to do. Don't wait till the moment that you're tempted and say, okay, uh, now what? Oh, and I'll guarantee you that nine times out of ten you'll succumb to the temptation. But if you decide in advance... I am not going to do this. I'll almost guarantee you, you'll be fine. God will help you endure it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, the word is endure, the word for bear. We're hard on people, aren't we? We, we want to say, you know, those people can't endure it. Those people can't bear it. We talked about this a little bit in our class today. You know, God is so lucky to have us. We're not sinners. We're not tempted. We're fine. There was a passage of Scripture, I believe, that says, I'm glad I'm not like this tax collector. And so I, like, I think a lot of times what happens is we think, you know what? This is a church. I've, I've heard people say, I don't want to go to that church. Those people sin. I have, I, 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 I've not had health problems until it seems like lately. Uh, but, you know, can you imagine if and when my heart went banging in, in the wrong direction and that kind of stuff, can you imagine if I would have said to the doctor, I'm not going to that hospital because there are sick people there. 
I'm glad you're here. And I want to tell you something. Satan saves his best work for you. Because you're sitting here today, Satan, he's already got the world. He knows what the world wants, and he's already won them over. He's already got them. He's already won their hearts. Don't you think he saves his best work for those who proclaim Jesus? And so we need to be careful about condemning others. In Proverbs chapter 4, it says, Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Don't turn to the right or the left, but keep your foot from evil. I want to encourage you to resist. The Bible says if you resist the devil, he will flee from you in James chapter 4. And Jesus said, I will be with you always even to the very end of the age. Temptation is a part of all of our lives. One of the things that we have are brothers and sisters that care. I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know what it is that you might be having to deal with, but I want you to understand, number one, you're not alone. Number two, God is faithful. Number three, it's not anything that nobody else has ever faced before. And we're here to stand beside you. Our shepherds will be in the back in just a minute. But we want to encourage you, if you have any need, anything that we can help you with, can we pray with you about a temptation? We would love to do that. We're going to stand and sing this song and encourage you at this time. Let's stand. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. For still our ancient foe
I'm not up here this morning to confess. We don't have that much time. Yeah, it's almost laughable, isn't it? But it's true, probably. I, I've got some dear friends in the Lord, and uh, I talk with them every week, and they live in another state. Their little granddaughter, Ada, 11 years old, um, got sick in the early part of last week. Started running a fever of 104. Um, just ached, could hardly move. They took her to urgent care twice. They said there's nothing wrong with her that won't come out sooner or later. Well, fever continued and she broke out with splotches all over her body. And uh, they took her to the University of Iowa. She's been there the better part of the week and uh, with Lyme disease. And uh, the worst part about this whole thing is the inflammation that she has around her heart. And they don't know, it's one of those deals where if they catch it early enough, there won't be any long-term effects. And uh, we just don't know right now. And I told Phyllis and Glenn that I'd bring this before the church this morning. And I've got a special favor to ask you, and, and this isn't gonna be a, a long-term thing, because I believe in God's power in number. Would you pray for Ada sometime today? Just remember that 11-year-old girl that, that, that John went up and talked about this morning. If you will, will you raise your hand, please? No, I want it good and high if you're going to do it. I want, I want to know who's going to do it. Okay. Sometime today, would you please pray for Ada? Uh, she just went home yesterday, but they said her activity has got to be minimal for, for some time because of the inflammation that's still there. And, that, uh, and I'll pray for her right now. Father... Would you heal this little girl, Ada, and take, take this thought of mine, please, Father, and, and minister to her and to her needs and bless her accordingly to, to your will. Pray these things through Jesus. Amen. Good morning. I'm going to resist the temptation to say anything about that table. So just putting that out there. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to. Yeah. Um, well, it's good to have everybody here this morning. Uh, it is uh, wonderful to see the number of people that are here, to see uh, faces uh, that we haven't seen for a while uh, back. Um, I wanted to point out Dwayne over here. To, it's great to see Dwayne over here that back with us, uh, fighting back pain for so long. It's great to hear your news. Uh, Lauren Anderson is uh, with the Andersons back here. Great to see Lauren uh, here. And, and there's just many, too many to, to count uh, in that regard. But it's, it's great to see you uh, back here today. Um, uh, I wasn't going to make any comments, but that last song uh, made me think about our, our theme this morning, the M a Mighty Fortress. Uh, I just, within the last month, finished reading a biography of Martin Luther, and Martin Luther wrote that song. And it struck me as I read about all the things that he dealt with, uh, what, five, six hundred years ago now, how similar those are the, to the same things that we deal with today. There really is, although technology and things like that can change, the core issues that we face and that, that we're tempted by and that we run into uh, remain very much the same. And uh, uh, the good news is, is that God is good and, and God will be our mighty fortress. Uh, we don't have a lot of announcements. Uh, there are announcements on your, uh, your sheets uh, that we do have the 5 o'clock uh, devotional tonight. Uh, I do want to thank all those who uh, pitched in last week. I did not pitch in, uh, as my wife will attest. I'm always out of town when things like this happen. Uh, I, uh, I used to travel quite a bit, and she would always complain that the big snowstorm or whatever would happen when I'm gone. 
And when I wasn't there to help, and I just happened to be out of town to a conference last weekend and, and missed all that good stuff, but, uh, uh, but I, I do appreciate all those who, who helped out. Um, we do have uh, many people to remember in, in our prayer requests, and I ask that you would do that, uh, and we'll add Ada to our, uh, our list of, of people to pray for. But would you bow with me at this time? Dear Father, we thank you so much for all that you do for us. We thank you for uh, your constant care and your love, and we pray that we will uh, always seek you uh, in times of stress and in times of need and in good times as well. Father, we uh, do pray for, for Ada, and we pray that her, we're glad to hear from John that she's out of the hospital, but we pray for a full and complete recovery. We pray that you will be, uh, you'll continue to be with uh, Duane and, and his recovery and Lauren and his recovery. Uh, be with Duane uh, DeBoer, who has surgery upcoming. Please uh, continue to be with uh, Tom and, and Michael, who are, are fighting cancer. We pray that you'll continue to be with them and the doctors that are ministering to them. Father, we have many people on our prayer list, and we just continue to pray for those who are fighting illnesses and fighting other issues. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, and we pray for comfort. <coughs> for them. Father, uh, we thank you uh, for your son, for the good news that we have, that he has come, that he has died for us, and that we have uh, the ability to have life everlasting with you and him. Please be with us as we go on through our week and bring us back again safely at the next time. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand for this last song. I haven't done anything strange for a while, so we're going to shake that up and start back. Uh, you know, by far, most of the songs that we sing are to or about God or Jesus or something like that. This song is actually geared towards us. How are we going to or what are you going to do to share the good news that Jesus will come and save you if you follow him? So what I'm going to ask you to do during this song is sing it to your brothers and sisters that are here. Everybody's staring at me. It's okay if you turn and look at somebody else, if you point at them, if you even smile at them or leave your row. It's the last song you're about ready to leave anyways, and we've just talked about temptation, so you can pray for forgiveness if you're not comfortable with it, but give it a shot. Let's sing to each other, He will come and save. Say to those who are fearful hearted, do not be afraid. The Lord your God is strong with his mighty arms when you call on his name. He will come and save. He will come and save you. He will come and save. Say to the weary one, your God will surely come. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. Lift up your eyes to him. You will arise again. He will come and save you. Say to those who are broken, hearted do not lose your faith the lord your god is strong with his loving arms when you call on his name he will come and save he will come and save you he will come and save you say to the He will come and save you. 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 He will come
come and save you. Lift up your eyes to him, you will arise again. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. Say to the weary one, your God will surely come. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. Lift up your eyes to him. You will arise again. He will come and save you. Lift up your eyes to him. You will arise again. He will come and save Miserable failure, people. <laughs> but be blessed. Go out and share that news with those you love.